Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Brendan Kennelty. Of the, the next frontier in relationship marketing and relationship building opportunities online, which is the social marketing space. So, um, you know, I'm really excited to kind of share with you some, some thoughts on what Microsoft is doing. Uh, I've done some stuff beyond Microsoft, which I can also share a little bit of. And then um, perhaps during the q and I'd love a chance to chat with you or after about what you're doing. And, and all, it's all about learning. And at this point, this is a very new space. And you'll see a, a number of companies doing a lot of tactical executions where they're trying different things. I've got a couple of examples from uh, recent, uh, the recent news I'd like to share with you and just walk through why I think they're neat. But um, this is a very new space. There's a lot of stuff going on. There is a lot of investment in technology that's going on that will enable a lot more of the targeting and analytics capability that we're used to on, on kind of the, the direct mail and some of the other CRM type aspects um, in terms of relationship building and targeting. But this is a... Uh, I'm going to show you some of the stuff we're doing today, and, and hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy this. So um, I, I do this for a reason, but I, I want to just go through a little bit about me and a little bit about the company. And, and there's a point behind this, which I'll share in a second. First of all, about me. So I, uh, I'm a father of two boys. I uh, have a, a beautiful wife. Um, we love to do lots of traveling, and I coach hockey. And, as just to you know, I apologize for speaking English during my presentation today, but as penance for that, when I got up this morning to go to the gym, I got on the treadmill and right across, out the window was the Centra Bell. And so as a Leaf fan, I had to, for 20 minutes, just kind of stare at the sign. So, you know, congrats on the win last night. Um, but, um, and so I, I, I think during the bio it mentioned, I've worked on the CRM program at uh, BlackBerry. I've worked at uh, CPG. Uh, companies such as Procter & Gamble, Pillsbury, um, I also worked at Telus. Um, my most recent uh, job before Microsoft, I've been here for about a year, was at Maple Leaf Foods. So it's, it's very much about branding, uh, building consumer engagement, uh, those types of things, uh, as well as I've worked on the agency side, so I have a pretty good round out in terms of what's going on. And then uh, most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with Microsoft. We've launched a series of new consumer products this year. Consumer has been a huge focus for Microsoft in 2012 and going forward. You probably saw all the Windows 8 stuff. It's hard to miss that. Surface, um, all the Xbox, all the Skype. You'll see uh, Microsoft move more towards consumer where this idea of relationship building is more and more important. I mean, uh, Microsoft has traditionally been a commercial sales enterprise very much connecting with kind of on a one-to-one -one basis with customers. As they move into consumer, it's a whole different type of marketing, as most of you know, I believe, in this room. I understand this is more of a consumer crowd, so we're going to talk more about the consumer side today. And the reason I share a bit about myself at the beginning of the presentation is I, I believe that social is a place where you need to get personal. And so I, what I'm trying to, to kind of do here is give you a, a sense of what's behind um, our company, the people that you see online behind our company, behind our Twitter handles, behind our Facebook, you'll see their names. You'll be able to connect with them. Consumers can connect with them. And that's a bit of a change, but it's really fundamentally important as you start to try to be successful in, in social. It is a very personal, transparent type of relationship. And you'll see uh, some of the examples that I show, as well as if you talk to other folks that are doing this. I think McDonald's is in later. You'll see it's, it's very much about kind of participating in getting out there as opposed to kind of broadcasting your message. And that's in terms of building relationships, some of the things we've seen being very successful building deep relationships. So just to talk a little bit about, um, you know, kind of relationship marketing and social. Really what I see social as is, is the chance to drive advocacy and then put jet fuel on it when you put it into these social media platforms. Think of, think of it as every time you have a relationship or a connection with somebody. So if somebody calls your call center or you have a salesperson or you're in the store, there's one person interacting with, with one of your employees. And that's one great experience, or hopefully great experience, where you're building a little bit of relationship. When you start doing it on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and these other social media places, you're driving tremendous amplification and reach of that experience, that positive relationship building experience. And that's where you start to see have the ability to have huge impact building relationships, because also you get the word of mouth. 
the friend of a friend. So it's not me sharing the positive, the brand sharing the positive experience. It's the person sharing the positive experience with the brand, with their, uh, with their friends and family. And that starts to amplify. And that's how you start to see, and I'll show some numbers later in the presentation, you start to see um, real movement in loyalty metrics and relationship type metrics as you start to really architect that. And that's something you have to, to have to do. And I'll show you examples of how we've done it. And, and so that's really the, if you, if you spend a lot of time in the social space now, the word you hear is scale. Scale, scale, scale. So that's great. We can do it, you know, we can build, you know, small audiences here, small audiences there through these social media properties. We can build some advocates. How do we scale the program? And we'll talk a little bit through some of these things, uh, these things as we go through um, thing. And, you know, just the point there, the number two is it's got to be a real, if you go into this space and you want to use this channel for your company, um, you, you need to go in and you need to be real. And yeah, I'm sure you've heard that in any, if, if you're interested in social, anything that you've, you've done or seen, it's got to be an honest connection. And again, we'll show you some examples of that. Um, just a couple of examples that I love, just two quick ones that are recent. So I don't know, folks, did anybody see this? So th this is a, a great example by Tim Hortons. I love Tim Hortons. I, I've worked with the Tim Hortons uh, team um, through my agency life. I know them very well. I love what they're doing in social. And this, to me, was a fantastic example of them taking, so social is also about, very much about um, timeliness. Much, again, if you think about it in the context of relationships, if I don't wish somebody a happy birthday for two months after their birthday, that's really not me showing that we have a great, much of a relationship. You need to kind of be timely and relevant and, and, and kind of on point. And so I thought this was fantastic. So Jason Priestley, um, oh, I folks hopefully know, um, mention, he was on a um, How I Met Your Mother, they had a Canadian version of this, and he mentioned they were all doing things about their favorite Tim Hortons donut. So there was a series of the actors doing their favorite Tim Hortons donut memory, what were you eating when you, when you heard about a specific event. And what he did is he mentioned a donut that didn't exist. He said, uh, I, I wish they'd make a, uh, there was a donut called the Priestley, and it would have a chocolate Timbit inside of vanilla with, it basically described what they, what is on the side there. And so what Tim Horton saw that, and they went into their lab, they produced the video, or sorry, they produced the donut, they took a picture of it, they basically tweeted out at Jason, hey Jason, we loved your idea, here's your donut. And so Jason has a bunch of followers, and then mainstream media picked it up, uh, the Montreal papers picked it up, it went nationwide. And so they generated tremendous earned media uh, impact from just kind of connecting and building a bit of a relationship with Jason Priestley, who they did not have in the past. And that's just an example of a quick little opportunity they saw, didn't really cost anything. It was really just thinking of it, being creative, and reacting to an opportunity. And so they ended up in Marketing Magazine, which I think came out last week, and just as a bit of a case study. And you see tremendous spikes. Again, it, we'll talk about earned media as a, as a metric, a key metric of this. But they saw you know, tremendous impact in uh, people receiving this message. They're seeing the brand having fun. They're seeing connecting with the celebrity. All those things you want to see when you're trying to build relationships. The second one I, I want to just show quickly is, this was, I think, last week. So folk, you pro folks probably saw this one. I think this was nationwide also. Um, this idea of uh, Bell's Let's Talk. Now, they, they did get a little bit, and I think there's some folks here from Bell. Um, I, I read a little bit about, you know, was this legitimate and honest, or was there motivation, you know, kind of brand motivation beyond caring about the charity, but I, I kind of believe it's, it's sincere, and the impact they had in one day, really through, they had a ton of media in terms of their own properties driving awareness of this, but when you saw the kind of amplification they were getting from advocates sharing with their friends, um, you saw, if you see over there on the, I know it's a little hard to see, but so these are monitoring reports, which I'll talk about in a second, where you can track the, uh, the number of mentions of brands or keywords in the social space over time. You can see the tremendous spike they had as people shared out this, uh, this hashtag on Twitter and started to really drive their friends to say, you should do this too. It was a very easy task. We just had to tweet out or make a text uh, message or I believe it was a call. I'm not exactly sure what the mechanics of it were. I'm just looking at the social side, where it was a very simple thing to participate, and they donated five cents from every tweet that went out, as well as the other text message and other pieces of the channel. But it was a great example of how they drove tremendous engagement in a very concentrated period of time, really trying to get people to, to kind of connect with their other relationships on this campaign's behalf and really drive 
uh, drive it out. And again, it, it did tremendous results, and I think it's a great example of, of a well-architected um, experience. So what are, what are we kind of up to? So the, the first thing that's really fundamental, um, you know, and I, I talk a lot trying to get people to spend money on social media, even within the company, that this, there's an economic model behind this, and I'm sure uh, most of you have probably heard of this paid, owned, earned media model now, which is very popular. Um, everybody's wanting to move from paid over to owned. So think of owned as your websites, your Facebook pages, your email database, all those things that you have as assets you can use, and then take, whoops, how do I go back? And then um, kind of take those owned and, and through the audiences you built, drive the earned. So really get, and this is, if you think about the economic impact of this. So back, you know, before websites and social, you know, every time you wanted to reach somebody, you had to pay for it, right? And so let's just say it was $10 an interaction, right? As you got into own, people had websites, people came to their websites for free, they didn't have to pay for it. Um, you know, the cost came down. We got email databases, we could do that for free. You know, it started to get lower. Where the real economies are is in social. When you start to take a message and you start to have it reach millions of people, you know, well beyond your owned reach, and, and most of the brands in Canada and around the world have a limited owned reach, but what's kind of unlimited is the earned reach. And you see that every once in a while where you really see, even the bell's a good example of that, where something really catches, a viral video really catches, and it, or a contest or something, and it really, you, you see way out in here. So this is about economics. And as you, the reason that we want to build relationships, these owned relationships, and, and try to generate these earned relationships is about this. It's about being able to go back and say, you know, we, we got for pennies a, pennies a touch or pennies a person, we we're able to get out to the, the far reaches of this, this curve, right? So, so just keep that in mind. I, I do think it's really fundamental and something that I, you know, I've really found people kind of connect with. They kind of get, okay, there's money at this. This is why we're doing it. We're not building Facebook because Facebook's fun. Well, it is fun. But we're doing it because it allows us to drive a different economics in the media, um, in the media landscape. So the particular pieces of the program that we focus on, so we've narrowed it down to five chunks within our social media program, um, or really kind of this, uh, this earned and owned media. Uh, the first one is, I put this in here, it, so it's, it's search optimization. So this is where your uh, results are showing up uh, in Google or Bing um, for free. And so you're not paying. So it's earned media, if you will. So I cl classify it as earned media. And if, if you think about it, if you can get that going, if you think about that curve for a second, the people coming to your owned media and your earned media, those are, those come, the cost per click comes way down if you can get that going. So it's, we won't talk about it today, but it is something that is really fundamental as you start this paid owned nerd shift, that you understand this, because that's a huge source of leads and, and traffic, it, whatever your particular uh, objectives are, your digital KPIs, that's a big opportunity for you. Um, the second one, obviously, is the own media. So this is something most folks are doing right now. Uh, we focus on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Um, we are not sophisticated enough to get into um, the Reddits and the Pinterest and stuff because there is a, an investment required to maintain all these channels. So we're focusing right now. We're, so I've been at Microsoft about a year, really kind of kicked off the Microsoft Canada, a lot of the Microsoft Canada uh, social program. So we're, we're in the early days there um, of doing it, and I believe you know, you should start to focus on these core ones, and then you can get into the fringe ones or, or the up-and-coming ones as your program matures. But you've got to start to join, show some kind of ROI on these for now. And around these, we try to grow the audience, so we want more fans, more followers, because again, it's, it's an owned audience that we can use to amplify earn, so the bigger the better, as well as community managers, they're really key, and we'll talk more about how we use them. Uh, but people who manage these, they, they build these relationships day to day with these audiences. A uh, digital influencer engine. So this is bloggers, mommy bloggers, tech influencers, um, a bunch of folks. This is, a ch this is an actual, we call these engines. This is an engine we're building, and I'll show you an example of this. This is really key. And again, I'll, I'll, I know that the McDonald's folks are talking about some of their programs later on. But you'll see a lot of leading brands. These folks are very important, and they're important for a few different reasons. It's not just about reach. A lot of people think, well, you know, if 
Erica M., who runs Yummy Mummy Club, has 200,000 followers. Well, if I can get her to tweet my stuff or mention my stuff, it's going out to 200,000 people, which is true, and, and that's key. You want that to happen. But it's also about content. And I'm going to show you an example of that as we, as we go through the presentation, what we, something we did for um, Windows Phone launch. These folks are very credible. They're real. They're kind of third party. They're independents. A lot of them won't take money. Um, they actually have a different economic model to make money. So they're fantastic people. And you want to have, these are key relationships. Think of it as an asset that you build these relationships and you can use them in your social program. And I'll show you an example of, of how we do that. Event amplification. So this is another one that, that we really focus on. Again, we do a lot of B2B events. Um, lately, we've done a lot of B2C events. We've done a Microsoft store launch in Yorkdale. And I'll show you, that's an example that I'll kind of go through quickly, how we use social to amplify the reach of that event. We launched Office, uh, the new Office 365 in Dundas Square in Toronto um, two weeks ago. Again, we used, we used all of these engines to drive awareness and engagement um, you know, out of these events. And then Enterprise Social, so this is a, a relatively new one, and you see some companies do it really well. I'll be honest, at Microsoft, we're just dipping our toe in the water. This is where you start to scale your program by bringing in your subject matter experts, your salespeople, your product experts into the social mix. And as I've talked to more and more people that are farther down the road in social, you need this layer. You need the, you need the scale. Like if I look at Microsoft, there's 1,000 employees in Canada. There's one of me, and I have two community managers. So that's, that's 1,000 people that are potentially available to answer questions, help build relationships, just help scale the program. And not everyone's going to be involved, but there is volunteers. We've had people come forward and say, I would like to, to go out and talk in social about Link or about Xbox. How do I do that? So you train them, you get them involved. But this, this is very important because it also allows your audience, your customers, to connect with more points. And that is incredibly powerful building relationships with your, with your customer base, be it the consumer base or commercial base. Um, so there's four metrics. So you know it, it's really important that, um, and I, I was talking to somebody about their social program the other day, and I was like, well, what's, what is your ROI? And they're like, we don't have one. It's just kind of a, we know we have to do it. And I was like, well, you know, are you having trouble getting money? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, that's probably why. Until you start to, to be able to articulate what are we trying to do and how does it drive value, um, it's very difficult to, to get these programs funded other than just being a pet project. And so the four things that, um, that we use at Microsoft Canada and that we've, I've found more and more consistency as I talk to other folks, the first one is this number of high value digital activities. So, so these are things that are as close as you can get. So not all of us sell online. Some people do sell things online where everything you do you can actually track right through to a transaction. So that's basic e-commerce and stuff. So that's, that's something. For those of us who don't have that, so we sell through other channels, or we're not able to, to follow the trail all the way to the money. What we do is we start to get um, the brand teams and the senior execs to agree on a list of digital activities, which we call kind of high value tasks, that they correlate to sales. And that's a bit of a negotiation. But then you gotta count those, and you have to show that your social channel, in, in addition to your digital channel, is starting to drive more of those activities. So you can imagine a chart that goes up every month. Uh, and, and you can start to put money beside you. You know, what is a trial worth of a, like, we sell a lot of products that require trial. So what's a trial worth? What are you paying in paid media? What if we can deliver it for half of that in, in earned and owned? So those are some of the discussions. But it really, you, whoops, you've got to get to, um, you've got to get to that idea of it's connecting to money or people kind of don't really want to, I find, don't want to talk to you. The second one is really the reach. So, you know, again, people like to see size. They like to see how, how many people can we talk to. I'm sure if, if, you're, if you're sitting in any of these, these digital or social media channels at a company, people come to you all the time and go, hey, can you, can you tweet this out? Can you uh, promote this contest, this new product, this event? So you're seen as a channel. And so the bigger the channel, the better. So measuring the reach and the growth in the reach and kind of your cost for growing that reach um, I'll talk about this in a second. The number of interactions. So in addition to the reach, it's how much engagement and interactions and earned media value. You can actually put a value on it and say, okay, if we spent you know, 10 million over here on paid media, if I go and say, well, you know, it's $20 CPM for all the earned and owned impressions, we can actually put a value on that that shows them 
this is what it's worth. So it's not just a, a cost center that's constantly spewing money. It's actually creating value. And it's value in media, value in reach, value in these, these end action growth. And then the last one, which is a little harder sell, depending on where you are. Um, I'm fortunate at uh, Microsoft where they care about this. But not all brands start to measure things like net promoter score and advocacy and loyalty. And I, probably, you in this room probably appreciate this more than others because it's, it's really, really key. And this is where, you, and I'll show you some numbers in a, in a minute, but that, that's where we've seen tremendous impact through social. So are you driving all of the, the numbers? The reach is growing, the interactions are growing, but the brand impact, um, the net promoter score in this channel is, like, goes through the roof. And I'll show you an example in a second. And that's, that's something that, you know, if your company cares about that, it's a great way to show we're building relationships, we're building advocacy, and that as we grow and drive those interactions, we're using that advocacy and relationships to drive those business metrics. So that's kind of how we've tried to set it up. Um, some, just some key tools, and then I'll go through the examples. Um, a couple of things you need in these programs. One is a social monitoring and measurement type tool. Uh, I don't know if folks have heard of Sysimos. That's one, Radian 6, there's a bunch of them now. Uh, it's, it's, it's something you need. It allows you to count what's going on on the web, you know, how many mentions, what's going on, identify key influencers that are talking about your keywords. So you're able to go on to, say, Twitter and say, OK, who's talking about the term you know, uh, Microsoft? And I can actually see exactly who is mentioning it. And you can build relationships with those folks, which, again, we'll be talking about in a second. But you reach out, connect with them, start to build a relationship with them in some sense. Uh, social activity management. So this is something as your program scales. So we use a tool called Sprinkler. There's a variety of these out there. They, again, allow you to measure things. They allow you to, um, to not have to respond to posts right away. You can schedule things. They just help you really manage, manage your, your Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, your social presence. And then offer pop. This is one I love. So you'll see in a second, we do a lot of contests and rewards. It's a key piece of relationship building for us in the consumer space. And I'll show you some, uh, some uh, survey in a second that kind of proves that. But this tool is fantastic. Uh, we do all our contests in-house now. We have uh, standard T's and C's. This is a, a tool that just plugs into our Facebook pages. You just skin it. We have very simple graphics. And you're able to basically pop up a contest and, and reward your, your customer base very quickly and very cost effectively. And we've seen, again, I'll show you the numbers, but we've seen tremendous impact with these very, without having to call the agency and have a very, I know there's some agency folks here, which will love the agencies, but in this particular instance, it's, it allows you to do things a little quicker, a little uh, more frequently, which is, again, key to kind of driving those relationships. So this is just, I'll just go through a couple of examples now. I don't know what time we're at, but. Um, uh, the first one is around our digital influencer engine. So I mentioned to you before, this is a core chunk of what we're doing. Um, we, this is an example around um, mommy bloggers. So we, we want to go out, and we know that in the consumer space, um, moms, particular one product, our Windows phone, which I'll show you in a second, is very, very important. So we actually go out and target these folks and build relationships. We have a program called our Digital Influencer Engine kind of program, where we go out and we, we talk one-on-one -on -one to these folks. We connect with them. We say, well, how can we work together? And there's, again, I mentioned there's, there's that reach idea, but there's also content. You know, do you want to participate in a Twitter party? Do you want to run an event with us? We're having a, a, a B2B social uh, enterprise roadshow, and we're like, would you like to be a panelist? Do you invite these folks that have influence in, and you build relationships with them? So this is just an example. So Blistum is a, um, a large mummy blogger conference in Canada. There's about 500 mummy bloggers uh, that come to this event in Toronto. It's in November every year. Um, and we uh, decided we wanted to kick this program off this year. And we went down and became a sponsor. And that allowed us to kind of you know, have an event and ha invite everybody there. And we actually had a Connect dance party. So if you've seen Connect with our motion sensor and, and Dance Central, we had it up on stage. We had a big contest. Uh, and for this audience, they love that. They're very extroverted, as you can imagine, mummy bloggers are. Um, we also had our Windows Phone Challenge there. So we went there and really said, listen, we're not asking you for anything. It's like the dating phase of the relationship building. We're just here to give you guys some fun. We're, we're, we're as a brand, we respect that you're important to our program. So we want to give you a drink. And we want to give you a prize and just have a bit of fun with you. We didn't ask them for anything. It was just a, 
you know, let's, let's just get started here. Just we're, We'd like to be part of the community. And then it was a lot of us being there asking them, how do we work with you? You know, uh, tell us about your business models. You know, and a lot of folks, digital influencers, what they're most concerned about is trying to drive eminent, what they call eminence, which is their reach, their credibility, their clout score, if you know that term. Just their, you know, how respected are they in the industry? And so as a brand, you can imagine, you can have a lot of impact helping them. Just having a relationship where that one of these folks can say, oh, I can call them and they call me right back. Or I email them and they'll email me back in 10 minutes. That's, that's right there is a level of, of uh, relationship building that they have that helps their business and helps what they're trying to do. And so through this process, we managed to connect with you know, these 500 women. There's a couple of actual men in that, in that group. We drove, and it, as kind of a bonus, we drove tremendous impact and reach and, um, and kind of engagement levels out into the social sphere that we never really thought about. It wasn't a goal when we did it. But we reached over 240,000 people through these people tweeting and sharing the pictures of the Xbox, their experience with our brands. So this is actual mentions of our products through this, this, this kind of two-day conference. So it went really well. And, and I'll show you how this has led to other programs that have kind of connect, built the relationships farther and farther. But this group, you know, we're also looking at doing this. So the consumer tech influencers are another area that, as, as Microsoft, you can imagine, is important to us. There's a number of folks there that we, we build these similar type relationships with. And ITDMs and, and BDM type influencers, so IT decision makers, business decision makers, are kind of the next area on commercial that we're really focused on. Commercial's obviously still a huge part of our business. So you, you go and you go out and target them. You try to figure out who they are, try to figure out what their voice is. You try to kind of build that relationship. And it's very much a, the way you build relationships with anybody. It's you can't do it en masse. You have to do it. You can do it you know, a few at a time, but it needs to be very, um, it has to feel like it, you're, you're legitimately building a relationship with these folks and you respect them. So we do a lot of things like bringing them in for lunch. We, we, we've been using our new store at, Microsoft, uh, at Yorkdale in Toronto. We only have one. Hopefully they, they expand that soon to other great places. I know one here that maybe would, would really uh, suit a store. But it's a great, because of these stores, the way they've constructed them, and, and this is um, something they, they planned, it actually has an area in the back that is a, a kind of a, um, a presentation area. And you can bring folks in from the community and use it. So these bloggers, for instance, are, can just call up. We have a community manager at the store. They can actually go in and use our store. So again, it's just the brand saying, hey, if you want to use it, bring, you know, want to have a lunch party, dinner party, or whatever, come on into the store. If you want to do a tech lunch and learn, we have Xboxes, and there's all sorts of stuff set up in the store. It's really neat. But it's, it's just, again, a way to, to try to connect with them. So we do a lot of those types of things to try to, again, it's all about relationship building with these folks. These folks can really, really help you, as I'll show you in a minute, if they like you. And I think we've done a pretty good job over the last three or four months of getting a few of these folks to really actually legitimately have a relationship with us. Um, so this is just an example. So we did Blistem in, uh, I think it was in September or October. We met these women. They had a great time with Microsoft. They all called us later and said, we'd love to do something with you. Really, really like that you've come. You seem to be different now. We thought you were going to be like gray suits and red ties, and you weren't. You were like fun, and we, we danced and whatever. And so when we launched our store, we didn't really, we told them about it, and we, we actually had a few of them come in, and we did a VIP event behind scenes. So we had, I think, about 25 of kind of the folks that we met at that, at that Blistem event come in. And so in addition to our PR event, we actually had a social media where you know, I requested, can I have an hour at the store? So it was a pretty big deal when we launched the store in Toronto. It was part of the New Yorkdale wing launch. It was, you know, people wanted to come and see the New Yorkdale wing. There's some beautiful new stores in there. And so they had a chance to come in and tour the whole facility kind of on our invitation as well as see the store. And so you can imagine they were like, okay, you know what, this is pretty cool. We'll support this. And so they started, the day we launched, they were tremendous in terms of driving the reach of the message. And you can see how this kind of works up here, where you know, we tweeted out, we have about 7,500 followers from Microsoft. But all of those influencers now follow us, and they reach hundreds of thousands of people. And so as you know, they, they see us do something they believe in, and that, that we have a relationship, and they're like, oh, that's, they, they help us. And they start to, to tweet it out to their followers, and then their followers, and then their followers. And then it starts to go and go and go. And then you, know, you hit people that are bigger, like this Evan Carmichael, he's actually a uh, um, a business influencer, and he's somebody that we've started to build a relationship with. So he starts to mention it. 
And it's not just mention it, they start to put a comment in there and you start to, they use the hashtags that we ask them to use. And so we're able to track it all. And so you can start to see that we're, we're driving this, this reach of our event message. The, and not just reach, but engagement. I mean, Tim Hortons, this is a picture here. Again, I kind of know the Tim Hortons people, but we tweeted a picture in the morning on the way to the store, said, we're so glad to be in Canada. We're bringing in our store the first, um, their first Tim, Tim Hortons coffee as you know, excitement about coming to Canada. And Tim Hortons picked that up and they sent it out and said, oh, we're so excited. We're glad you decided to take the coffee to, to, uh, to the store to welcome the new store. And went out to their 60,000 followers. And it's just doing those kinds of things. So it's not just, when you're thinking about influence, it's not just about people, brands. So trying to find brands that you can connect with and, uh, and try to have that kind of synergistic relationship and bit of a relationship with too is really important. Um, I mean, a lot of our, um, like Lenovo and Intel and the folks that you would associate with Microsoft, a lot of them we have social media relationships, Best Buy, Future Shop. We actually connect, we talk, Rogers. Um, we always talk about, you know, how can we help each other? You know, and again, it, it, I, I just look at it, it's relationships. It's just like sales and other disciplines. It's, it's very, very important. It's not just about broadcasting and hope something happens. You have to really, really work it. And here's just some quotes. And so it, it, this went very well. It was a great example of how that, that relationship investment started to pay dividends. And then we did the same thing for, for the, the, uh, the office launch. Again, folks supported it. They got excited. They actually came down to the event, took pictures, tweeted those out, um, you know, gave us ideas. So it was, it was, it was, uh, that program is going very well. And then I just want to go through the Windows phone launch. So <laughs> does anybody know that we have a phone? <laughs> So it, we're, we're very honest about where we are on phone. So um, the share is, is relatively small. And I, I come from RIM and TELUS, so I, you know, I can appreciate where we are. And most of the phone team at Microsoft is actually um, starting to come over from RIM and some other places. And the idea is really to drive penetration, you know, to go from 0%, 1% of the market into some reasonable number. The product is fantastic. The new one that they launched, Windows Phone 8, is, is, is a fantastic product. I, we use it at the office, and I think it's fantastic. And so what we did was, uh, working with the Windows Phone team, we, they didn't have a lot of money for launch. They wanted to do a big social program. And we said, OK, well, there's some things we're going to need to do here. We need to do some trial awareness and trial, because you've got to get products in people's hands, as you guys know, get them to then come back and tell their friends, wow, that's a great product. So we've got to get products into the market. We've got to get even on a small scale, we've got to get some advocates that can actually have a relationship and come back and, and provide content for us that we can amplify out. And then we had this kind of saying, we've got to win someone before you can win everyone. right? You, you can't go out and try to convince everyone to try a new product. You've got to convince a few people, and then they try to convince their friends, or it's kind of that's more that social kind of model. And so we were trying to go after busy, uh, tech-savvy moms. That's the target for this particular product. And so our social strategy is really about providing community support around purchase consideration. So we kind of had this thing. It's like, you know what? If I'm going to buy a new car and nobody else has it, and it's really cool, and it seems like really good for me, but I go around and ask everybody, and everybody goes, I don't know, man. I, uh, I don't know about that car. Like, no one has it. There's no dealers. How you gonna, Like an electric car or something like that. You can just imagine that you've really got to be keen to buy that, be the first person on your block to get something. And some people love to do that, but for the masses, they're like, I don't know, I'll kind of wait to see. So you, we need, you need to feel like you're not alone. You're not making some decision that absolutely nobody thinks is a good idea. So that was part of what we were trying to do, and I'll show you kind of how we did that. So the two tactics we decided to really pursue were Facebook and a mommy blogger program. And I just want to go quickly through these, because I'm actually really proud of this, because we won a global award for this, um, and, and I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the head, but I think it was really smart. If you, again, keep in mind those two objectives and what we, we did to kind of start building the relationships with this target market. So um, the first thing we did was we, we have some Facebook research that we've done through our channels. And, and it, the question is, you know, what do you like more of? So why do people come to Facebook pages? And you've probably seen other surveys like this if you've spent time with Facebook. But what should you do on your page if you want people to come? And the number one thing, I've done a lot of this over my career, the number one thing that always comes up is contests and promotions and offers. They want free stuff. They want, um, and, and you can imagine that makes a lot of sense, right? It's, it's got to be fun. It's got to be like I'm getting something for going. But they also really want tips and tricks. And 
Every brand I've worked on, these are always the top two things. So that they do want free stuff, consumers, but they also do legitimately want to understand how to use their products better. So I worked at Maple Leaf. It was always about recipes. The recipes would be that tips and tricks. Give me t how do I make you know, my meals faster, better, more healthy? So there's always th so those as two kind of core value proposition elements that you can really deliver against your program are really kind of where we, we focus on. And so um, we went out, we started to, to basically drive a, um, a series of activities on Facebook. And I'm just going to go through three of them really quickly. The first one is this concept of week of winning. We had to get phones into the market. We got to get people trying them. So, and we, we know people love contests. And these new products are really, really hot. Um, I'm not sure if you're, if you're mobile phone folks. But the new HTCs, the new Nokias, they're pretty hot handsets. They're beautiful devices. Everybody kind of wants to try one. So we, let's get them out there. So we, we, we started these series of week of winning. So we did a series of them. We did one with each of our handset manufacturers, one with HTC, one with uh, Nokia, one with Samsung, where we gave away five, in, for, one for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so people get excited about that. Um, they, they really enjoy uh, the chance to win one of these devices. They start to share it with their friends. And you can see we had tremendous growth in our, in our kind of light curve. Um, as we start to launch these types of things. They become very viral. And one of the things we did about this using the OfferPop tool is, because we wanted to drive not just you know, win a handset, we want you to actually learn about the product and why it's different. So it allows you to have this, this thing called a tug of war where it's about votes. So people have to vote for their favorite feature before they can enter the contest, which is a very minor piece of friction, but allows you to feature some pieces of your, of your product and kind of, again, get that awareness around the reward layer. And this is something that we did a series of these. We're going to do many more of them. They do really, really well. We get great feedback. Um, people um, you know, continually ask you know, our kind of community managers, you know, when are we going to get another chance at that? You know, we're really exciting. And then we, have, we always put a feedback loop in the winners. So the winners have to kind of come back and tell us. They have to give us a picture of themselves with the device. They have to tell us what they thought of it. It could be good or bad. We don't tell them what to say. Well, but this particular product's been doing well, and people get really excited about it. But again, it's about relationships. It's about listening to the, to the audience, giving them what they want, and then kind of engaging them around it. The second one we did was um, this idea of start screen battles. This, this start screen we found, or home screen, is very unique to the Windows Phone product. You, you've probably seen it in the Windows 8 uh, ads too, this new tile format. These tiles are all live, so everything kind of moves around and constantly updates. And they're very creative. Everybody's is different. We actually have a series of television spots of shows like Jessica Alba and Gwen Stefani. They have completely, and down in the States, they have a bunch of athletes, Cam Newton and these types of folks, showing their start screens and how personalized it is. And we did an experiment um, uh, at an event we were at where everybody sw sw uh, switched phones. So I give my phone to the person beside, and I open it so they can look at my start screen. And it's actually scary how much you can tell about somebody by looking at what they've put on their, start, their home page. Because are they into music? Are they into sports? They have pictures of their family. You just, it's amazing how much you can tell. So we really wanted to leverage that insight about this, this, uh, these start screens and the creativity and the color of it. So we were just doing these simple little battles where we'd, we went out. We did one for Christmas and Halloween where you just go and say, do, would you, do you like witch or do you like you know, goblin? And, and so they were, again, just fun. The winners of, uh, we, we had it also tied into a phone giveaway to try to drive again trial. But it was just fun. It was uh, uh, very engaging. It got the product message across. Uh, again, it was kind of driven off insights that people like this type of thing. So uh, this went really, really well. We saw a lot of likes, and we didn't put any, really any media behind this. And uh, it did very well. Um, the kind of next one we did was we wanted to, again, do something around fun. Um, a bit of a, a reward, and I'm almost done. And um, so what we did was we had this idea of the play on the search for Canada's next top model. Couldn't use that name. So what we, we did was we always have, if you look at, at phones and, and this type of tech products, there's always a hand in the doing demos and stuff. So we actually had a contest to search for the next Windows Phone hand model. And it was just a fun thing that we did where you had to submit a picture, and there's a bunch of ways you could do it. But again, it was very simple to execute. It, it received a tremendous response from our community. They, got, they thought it was, again, you imagine, these are, these are, we're targeting kind of those busy moms. This is the kind of stuff that really resonates with them, according to our research. And so this, went, again, went 
uh, the numbers aren't quite as big as I think the impact that we got. And we had a lot of really positive things. It was just fun and something interesting to do. But again, it's just building relationships. So we just did the shoot. So the winner came to Toronto uh, last Friday. We had them in a studio. We shot their, their hands doing all this thing. Um, I'm not exactly sure their videos and other stuff that were going on. And so you'll see that person then being featured throughout the, as kind of bringing that community piece back in and that relationship back into the, to the storyline, um, which is kind of fun. And then just the last thing I'll mention um, as kind of a closing piece here is this, this is something I'm really, really proud of because I think it was so insightful and it took a lot of, um, I didn't think the company would do it. So what we did was, uh, we were so pro confident after we saw the Windows 8 phone product that we're like, you know what? We, we've got to do like a Pepsi challenge with this thing. So we went out, again, we went out to our relationships with our mommy bloggers, and we, we said, we want 15 of you to take a Windows phone challenge. So we want you to swap your phone, whatever you're using, Blackberry iPhone, with the Windows phone for, the, it was about 40 days, over the Christmas holiday period. And we found a few of them that said, okay, I'll give that a go. So you're gonna give me a free phone, yeah. What do I need to do? Well, no, you just, you just have to commit to using it, trying it, because the whole thing here was, we really believe you have to get over a technology hump. If you don't get over the hump, you'll never, you always get frustrated and you'll go back to your old thing. So you've got to commit to getting to at least here. And so they did, they were all, sporting, and I, I, unfortunately I don't have the video, I was hoping I could show it. It's really funny of them. The day we had an event at our store, we had a bag, you had to take your old phone and drop it in, in the bag. And the reaction on the women's faces was priceless. Because you can imagine, I'm sure all of you are the same, like that's your lifeline. And, and these, these women are tech-savvy mummy blood. They, they live on Twitter. They live in these things. And they had, and it, so I'll, maybe I'll send it around. Joe can pass it out. It is fantastic. And um, so anyways, we, we did this. They, we had a series of events. We had a Twitter party, where, which was about three weeks in past. They were over the hump. And we had a support. Um, so they had training. They got all set up. We transferred all their contacts over. So they walked out of our store with their new Windows phone. They had Nokia was in, Rogers was in. We had all sorts of big support ecosystem around them. Um, they walked out, they were like totally comfortable. They had all the apps they needed. Everything was working perfect. Uh, we had a Twitter party about halfway, which was unbelievable. One of the biggest scores I've ever seen for a Twitter party. I think it reached about four million people. We had 20 million impressions. Um, people got really excited because all their followers were like, well, what, the what phone? What, what do you mean, what does it do? Like, and so it was really, really incredible. And then at the end, because it, it was a challenge, so in uh, the first week of January, second week of January, we had them back in. We did a focus group with them. We asked them about what they thought, pros and cons. We had all our product team come down, which they really appreciated. Um, and we got tremendous uh, feedback on the company's openness to doing it. Again, from a relationship perspective, it, I just thought it, it did an incredible job really building relationships with these 15 women and some of their followers. But 15 out of 15, kept the phone, right? And you know, I think that's a testament to the product, but I also think it's a real testament to the relationships and the way we manage this and, the, and really connected with these folks. And they feel really loyal and connected to the company and the brand for being part of this experience. And so I, I think that that's a really great example, uh, you know, trying to say that humbly, but a really great example of, of a way you can use these folks build relationships with them and really leverage them. Because on the back of this, you can imagine the earned media impact we had, which was really, you know, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do. And then all that content, we amplify out. You know, so these are people everybody knows, and we're, we're talking about it on our Facebook page, saying, oh, check out her blog post, you know, and people know who she is, right? So that type of thing. And um, I will just kind of do this quick. What do we have, five minutes? The, uh, the impact and advocacy. So this is, for me, you know, Again, driving end actions, driving earned media, driving um, reach is important. But for me, I think I really value the, 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 uh, the program on this. So this is our net promoter score. And this is where in June uh, 2012, we did net promoter. Are folks familiar with net promoter score? It's kind of a loyalty metric that you ask people, how likely are you to refer um, this uh, product or service to a friend or family member? It's just one question. And you take people who give you a nine or a 10, out of 100, and you subtract the people that give you 0 to 6, and then you have a score. So um, if, if um, 70 people give you a 9 or a 10, and 40 people give you 
0 to 6, your score is 30. You, you ignore the, ones, the, the numbers in the middle. And so um, Apple, Google, Facebook, um, you know, big loyal brands, you see they're very high. Right? And so you know, we've managed to move, through, this is just our social channel, um, we've managed to move our numbers from you know, minus 6 on Windows Phone in June to plus 26 in December. And that was um, just about the middle of the mommy blogger effort. And that, that to me is incredible. Like I've worked on a lot of different brands around this stuff. And to, I've always seen movement in social because people just start to feel more connected and loyal with the brand. But you know, that's, that's a pretty good move. And, um, and I think this is a simple way you can, you can survey your base. You can compare it to what I call gen pop, which is if you want to compare it to your brand metrics outside of your social channel to be able to show that you're making impact within that audience. This is a, this is a good way to do it. And I think you'll probably find um, the investment. You'll move the numbers. Um, and then just you know, things we've learned. You know, alignment. We talked about alignment to some social KPIs. You know, it's got to be a long-term commitment. You don't build relationships for today. Relationships take a while, and people need to, to appreciate that. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success in-house with community management versus having an agency because people want to talk to you. They want to talk to the company, not to your agency. Um, that's, that's something we've had a lot of feedback on, making it personal versus the brand. So as I say, we always tag the end of our responses with the person's name. We, we use both our personal Twitter handles and the company Twitter handles kind of back and forth so people can also know, oh, this is the company. Oh, but I can connect with him because he's part of the company. Um, Collaboration between PR and digital it's, in this space, it's got to be very, very collaborative. Impact to self-serve media. We've had a lot of success driving um, low-cost reach and stuff through using Twitter and Facebook self-serve uh, media options. So it's just something to look at. And then that's about, that's about it. And I, I really thank you for all your time. And hopefully this was interesting or uh, <laughs> learned uh, something. And if you have any questions, certainly glad to stick around and, and answer any. But thank you.